Well, hello, hello, all my amazingly beautiful Zodiac family and friends. My name is Libra Empress, and this is another episode of Terror and Tarot with Libra Empress. Today, we are going to be watching three New Year's Eve horror stories animated by IMR Entertainment. Matthew was all set to go out party hard tonight. He called his best friend Rita and said, Hey, excited for New Year's Eve? What are we all doing tonight? With that same excitement in her voice, Rita replied, Of course, I have told everyone to arrive at 10pm sharp at the club. I will text you the address as well. Don't be late, dumbass. She chuckled and disconnected the phone. Within two minutes, a text popped up in Matthew's phone. I am our club, 2021. Subscribe Street, 10 p.m. Matthew looked at the clock. It was 8.30 already. He finished his coffee and ran to the washroom to get ready. Matthew lives in his apartment alone. His parents stay in Texas. Three years earlier, he shifted to New York and started his career here. Don't know why, but Matthew loves New York. He feels so normal while walking down these streets. This city is always busy, and now due to New Year, it has turned even more glamorous. The roads are decorated with bright lights, stars, Happy New Year banners. People are looking at their best, and every nightclub, pub, restaurant is filled with their crackles of joy and laughter. IMR Club is nearly 50 minutes drive from his house. Matthew has been to this club many times. Rita and Matthew often go there to grab a drink after a long, tiring week at work. The streets are covered with white snow, and blinking decorations appeared like a dream to Matthew. He stood near the wide dining hall while combing his hair. His phone rang suddenly, and he snapped out of his thoughts. It was his mother. He answered the call. Hi, Mom. What's up? His mother spoke from the other side. Happy New Year in advance, honey. Don't get too drunk. Matthew laughed and replied, Come on, Mom. Also, it's still the 31st of December. He talked to her for a while and noticed it was 9.30. Matthew ended the call with his mom and hopped inside his car. While driving to the club, crowds of people could be seen cheering on the streets. Matthew parked his car near the club and saw his friends standing in front of the club and waiting for him. He went to them and everyone got super excited. Matthew was about to enter the club with them just when his eyes went to the dark corner at his left. A man was sitting in the corner, hiding his face into his knees. He figured out that there is a small, dingy alley lying in that corner. Suddenly, he lifted up his face and looked at the sky. His face looked heavily scarred. He then looked at Matthew and smiled with his crooked tooth and heavily scarred face. There was something in his smile that made Matthew's heart crawl into his throat. Rita came to him and said, What happened? Let's go. Matthew shrugged off, saying nothing, and went inside the club to party on New Year's Eve. With the sound of joy and laughter, a group of young people celebrated New Year's Eve at IMR Club, and at 12 p.m., they all wished each other a very happy New Year. Around 1 o'clock, we all got up to leave. Matthew wished Rita goodnight and came out of the club looking for his car. The streets were still breaming with people celebrating the New Year. He took out the keys and approached the car. Matthew noticed that he has forgotten to lock the car earlier, but he was too drunk to stand there and regret his mistake. He got inside and started the car. Rita yelled at him while standing at the entrance of the club. Matt, you sure you can drive? Matthew said with a smile, Yeah, don't worry. I will reach home in 15-20 minutes max. He then waved his friends goodbye and drove away. The streets were filled with people and he was driving slow just to be safe from his side. After five minutes, he took a left turn and his eyes went on the back view mirror. As he looked onto it, Matthew's blood turned cold. He saw someone was sitting in the back seat. He couldn't see the man's face, but he could see his creepy, wide eyes watching Matthew from the dark. For a second, Matthew was numb and terrified. But then he thought, I am already hell drunk. There's no way I can fight this guy and drive the car at the same time. So he decided to be rational about the situation. Matthew asked in a scared voice, uh, hello, um, do you need to go somewhere? 
The man laughed in a very bizarre way and said, I thought you wouldn't even notice me. Matthew was sure that this man's only intention is to rob him. So, without wasting any more seconds, he said, Look man, if you want, you can take my wallet and leave. I won't even fight you, just please leave my car. I don't want any problem tonight. The man screamed at the top of his lungs and said, I am not some fucking beggar. Is that how you treat people in New Year? Keep driving or I will slice your throat with my sharp knife. The man then came forward and Matthew recognized his face in a flash. It was that same homeless guy near the club. He could see his face clearly now. His eyes were bursting out. There was something unusual about his pupils. They weren't like the pupils of humans. Instead, looked more like cats or a completely different creature. The guy told in the same spine-chilling voice, keep driving the car. There will be a right turn ahead. Take that turn. Do as I say, or this will be the last new year of your life. Matthew had no other option but to listen to this man. He had no idea if the man really had a knife with him or not, but there was no way he's taking the risk. After seven minutes of driving, the right turn came. As Matthew took the right turn, they got onto an empty road. There was hardly any car on that road. It was like an adjacent lane to the highway. The roads looked very spooky surrounded by bushy trees on the sides. There was hardly any light except headlights of Matthew's car on the road. After driving like this for five minutes more, Something unexpected happened. The man on the back seat started to cough terribly. Matthew noticed his eyes were turning even more wide as his tongue came out of his mouth. The man had a really big tongue, which creeped the hell out of Matthew. He realized there was something very wrong with this guy. Suddenly, the man told in a choking voice, Stop. Stop the car now. Out of fear, Matthew immediately stopped the car. The man got out of his car while coughing terribly. It felt like he couldn't breathe. Matthew sat inside the car, being numb. He didn't know what to do. He thought to drive back and get the hell away from this man as soon as possible, but something didn't let him. He sat in the car, staring at this man's unusual behavior. The man crawled on the road and came right in front of Matthew's car. The headlights were falling on him. What happened next terrified Matthew for his entire life. As the man choked to death, suddenly his bones started to crack on his own. He sat down on the highway while screaming like a creature from another world. The sound of his bones creaking fucked up Matthew's mind completely. He was already in a state of trance due to the alcohol. Now the sound of choking mixed with the bones cracking felt like a living nightmare. Matthew kept staring at this guy and slowly realized that the horror is yet to come. After a few seconds like this, the man suddenly got up and started to tear his own skin from his body. The way he was tearing off his skin made it seem like he was wearing a costume. He threw patches of skin, soaked in blood, here and there while screaming in pain. Matthew couldn't believe what he was witnessing. He knew he wasn't that drunk to imagine all of this shit. After taking the entire skin off, the man turned at the car and looked at Matthew. A horrifying human figure was standing in the middle of the road. There was not a single piece of skin on his body. The veins and red flesh gushing out of this vicious creature. Matthew was breathing heavily. He felt like his heart will stop right now. The man again stared at the sky and said in the scariest voice ever heard by human ears, It's time to get a new skin. You just turned lucky, as this time I'm going to pick a woman. Happy New Year, Matt. <laughs> the creature laughed in a demonic voice and hopped into the jungle like a four-legged animal and disappeared into the darkness of the woods. Matthew rushed his car way back home. He didn't talk, didn't come out for an entire week. He left New York after a month and came back to his hometown. One night, he was reading an article on Greek mythology which made a truly terrifying revelation. Greek people believe in a demon who is said to be a shapeshifter, or sometimes a skinwalker. These demons are said to acquire any creature's skin or shape to hide in the human world. Matthew knows these are just some old scary folklores, but how can he ever tell anyone that this New Year's Eve he actually came across a skinwalker? He prays to God that he never <laughs> sees that creature again in his entire life.
Adam woke up hearing loud screams. It was coming from his neighbor's house. They were having a New Year party. Adam looks at the clock. It was 12 p.m. He heard them wishing Happy New Year to each other. Adam's life has changed a lot within the last year. He got up from his bed and looked at his bedroom wall. The wall had an enlarged picture of a married couple. It was Adam and Selena. Adam met Selena while studying college. They got married and were living a happy life when Selena suddenly changed into a different person. She was seen depressed all the time. Last year, on this day, Selena jumped from his office roof. Adam still doesn't know why Selena committed suicide. He doesn't even have the minimum idea of what she was doing at his office that night. Staring from his bedroom window, Adam saw the entire sky filled with colorful crackers. Everyone in the city is busy celebrating the new year, except Adam. He got back to his bed and tried to sleep. He has lots of work tomorrow. Just when he closes his eyes, his phone rang. It was a call from Sophia. Sophia was Adam's secretary, but she left the job last year. Adam answered the phone, saying, Yes, tell me. Sophia replied in a soft voice, Happy New Year, Adam. Adam said in an irritated voice, Thanks, same to you, and disconnected the call. The next morning, Adam reached the office and entered his cabin. There were only a handful of people working today. Most of the employees are on the holiday. Even though Adam could have taken a break, he didn't. Julia came with a cup of coffee and said, Happy New Year, sir. Here's your coffee. Adam looked at her and said, I am going to leave for a business meeting. I will be back in the office by 3 p.m. I will finish the rest of the files then and leave for home by 7 p.m. So just arrange the pending files for me and then take the day off. Julia nodded and went to put the cup on his desk. Suddenly, something very weird happened. As Julia was about to place the cup on the table, she felt like someone pushed her from behind and the cup fell on the desk, spilling coffee all over Adam's white shirt. Adam stood up in anger, saying, What the hell are you doing, Julia? Julia said in tearful eyes, I am so sorry, sir. I don't know what happened. I just couldn't control my hand. Felt like someone pushed it. Adam looked at her with an irritated face and yelled, Ah, oh, shut up. Just arrange the files and leave. Julia left the cabin with a sad face. She had no idea what happened all of a sudden. Adam got up and took a close look at his shirt. The coffee stain was quite big. He can't go to a business meeting like this. He called the officials and told them due to some emergency, he has to shift the meeting after lunch. Now, Adam will have to work late at night. He got on into his car and headed for home to change his cloth. His house was a half an hour drive from his office. He unlocked the door and got into his bedroom to change. He was tucking his clean shirt when his eyes went to the enlarged photo on the wall. He was beyond surprised. The photo that featured Adam and Selena on their wedding day was not there anymore. It seemed like someone scratched Adam's face, tearing the photo in many places. The glass of the photo frame was shattered too. Broken pieces of glass were lying all over the floor. Adam immediately called security. As the security picked up the phone, Adam shouted, Did anyone get inside my apartment? The security said that no one entered the apartment since the morning. Also, if anyone broke in, the door shouldn't have been locked. Adam was feeling confused and annoyed at the same time. He said to himself, what the hell is wrong with my life today? He cleaned all the broken glass and stormed out of the house in anger. It was already 3.30 p.m. and he couldn't even eat. He met the clients in a conference room in a five-star hotel. After all the troubles, the meeting finally started, and fortunately, it went well. After the meeting, Adam went to the hotel restaurant to eat. He looked at the sky from the large glass window of the hotel restaurant. The sun was setting on the horizon. The reflection of the restaurant could be seen on this huge glass window. Adam took the first bite of his sandwich and looked up again to the window. What he saw made his heart drop to his stomach. There was a reflection of him sitting in the restaurant, but who is that? 
Who is the person standing behind him? There was a reflection of a horrible looking woman. Her face was partially bandaged and her body was covered in blood stains. Adam turned around immediately, but there was no one. He was sitting all by himself. Adam felt like he knew this woman, but couldn't see her clearly enough in the reflection. He said to himself, what is going on with my head today? Somehow, he finished eating and went to pay the bills. He looked at the cashier and said in a low voice, Um, excuse me, was there a woman here a few minutes earlier? The cashier looked at him with surprised eyes and said, No sir, you were the only one eating here at this time. After lunch hour, the restaurant mostly stays empty. Adam smiled awkwardly and left for his office. When he reached the office, there was no one inside. The empty office premise stood in front of him like a barren field. He went to his cabin and sat on his chair. He said to himself, what a life. A huge pile of files was lying on his desk with a small note that read, I have arranged the files just like you said, sir. Sorry for the morning incident. Adam felt bad for howling at Julia earlier. She didn't do it on purpose. As Adam started to think about it, something came to his mind. Julia said that someone pushed her hand, but there wasn't anyone in the cabin except them. This year has begun with a very unnatural start. Adam started to work on the files. His cabin was on the left side. He can see the workplace outside the glass door of his cabin. All the computers were shut down. The tube lights on the ceiling brightened the empty office in a very spooky way. After working for an hour, Adam decided to pour himself a cup of coffee. He was about to get up when he saw a shadowy figure standing at the corner of the workstation. The corner was dark and far from his cabin, so he couldn't get a clear view. He came out and said in a loud voice, Hello? Anyone here? No sound came except the sounds of winds blowing. Adam checked the area, but couldn't see anyone. He walked to the coffee machine and inserted a coin for a black coffee. An uneasy feeling was going inside his mind, as if someone is watching him. Adam raised his hand to take the coffee cup, just when he felt someone chuckled in his ear. Out of shock, he spilled some of the coffee on the floor. Drops of sweat appeared on his forehead. Adam turned around, but couldn't see anyone this time as well. He said in a shaken voice, Who is there? Come on out. He started to feel scared now. He threw the coffee into the dustbin nearby and said, That's enough for today. I am going home. To hell with this office and to hell with this work. He rushed inside the cabin and picked up his coat to leave. As he opened the cabin door, he heard a woman's voice. Adam. Adam. Can't you hear me, hun? That voice said. Adam's face turned pale. He recognized this voice, but how could it be? It was the voice of his dead wife, Selena. He replied with hesitation, Is this some kind of fucking joke? Who is this? The woman said again, I am waiting for you, hun. Come here. Adam couldn't help but follow the voice. He walked to the office roof, following the sound. The roof was empty and dark. Small lights were placed at the edge of the roof. The chilling wind was piercing Adam's heart. He was feeling extremely cold. Suddenly, he heard the same <laughs> chuckling sound behind him. As he turned around, this time, his heart dropped into his stomach out of fear. He said in a panicked voice, Selena, oh my god, but you are... Dead, right? Selena replied. Her face was partially covered with a bandage. Blood was dripping from her blonde hair. Her clothes were ripped and soaked in blood. Adam's eyes were wide in fear and shock. He fell on the floor. Selena started to walk towards him, slowly. And Adam started to crawl back like prey in front of a hungry lion. Selena said in a spine-chilling voice, Happy New Year, hun. I have come to get you. Adam screamed in fear, saying, Why? What have I done? Selena replied, I saw you with Sophia. How could you do that to me? You don't deserve to live. Adam's face shook in shame. He indeed cheated on his wife with the secretary but he never knew her ghost would come back to take revenge on him. He gasped and started breathing heavily. Please, forgive me. I fired her, believe me. 
Selina stopped for a second and said in a low voice, Do you want to see what happened to my face when I jumped off this roof? Slowly, she took off the bandage from her face. Adam has never seen such a horrifying face in his entire life. Her left eye was hanging down from the eye socket. The skin was smashed and red flesh was coming out of it. Her teeth could be seen widely as half of her lips were cut out. She screamed, scaring the hell out of him, and started to run towards him. Out of fear and huge shock, Adam lost all his senses and ran towards the end of the roof without seeing the edge of it. With a loud thud and blood freezing scream, Adam's body fell down from the sixth floor of his own office. Blood splattered all over the ground as his brains came out of his skull. The next morning, the local news flashed. An unfortunate death has taken place. Famous industrialist Adam Smith committed suicide last night from his office roof. A year back, his wife Selena Smith also committed suicide in the same manner. The police are investigating this matter. Everyone is shocked and out of words after discovering his body on the night of New Year. I know you won't believe me, but as Thanksgiving New Year is knocking on the door, this memory is haunting my mind all the time. I have kept it inside for a long time. Only my family knows about this incident. One Thanksgiving, my mom took me to my grandparents' house. It was our first Thanksgiving after my dad passed away. My grandparents stayed in Canada. It was a much needed break. My mom and I were looking forward to a trip for a really long time. As we drove past the hills, the view refreshed my mind. The tall hills covered with white snow and pine trees relaxed me a bit. I looked at my mom and asked, how long will it take mom? She smiled while driving the car and said, I know Jenny that you are excited to meet your grandparents, but it will still take an hour or so. My mom was right. I have never felt so much loved by anyone in this world than my grandma and grandpa. They came to visit us many times, but this is the first time I was going to visit them. We reached in the afternoon. It was a two-story wooden house with a beautiful garden. The garden was covered with snow, but the colorful orchards amazed my eyes. As I got down from the car, I saw grandma standing on the door, smiling at me. I could see tears in her eyes. I ran to her and hugged her. She hugged me back and caressed my cheek, saying, Oh my Jenny, we missed you so much. My grandpa came laughing and hugged my mom. We got inside. I sat down and my grandma offered me a cup of hot chocolate. The house was decorated with lights and shining Christmas bells and stars. I said in a curious voice, So this is the house where my mom grew up, huh? Trust me, Mom, your house is so much better than mine. Everyone started laughing. My mom was walking all over the house, staring at it with bright eyes. I could tell she was cherishing the old memories that she once made here as a child. My grandpa asked me in a happy voice, What is your plan for Christmas, Jenny? I shrugged my shoulders, saying, I haven't decided yet. My grandpa then said, If you want, you can stay with us till Christmas. We are really happy to have you at Thanksgiving, dear. I know after your father's death, things have been tough for you. But you should know, we are here for you, always. I smiled and said, I know, Grandpa. My mom said from the kitchen, Jenny, take your bags to your room. I took my bags to my room. My room was on the left side of the second floor. It has a big glass window facing the back side of the garden. As I started to arrange my clothes on the cupboard, I heard soft laughter. I turned back and the laughter stopped immediately. I looked around the room, but there wasn't anyone inside. I thought the sound might be coming from outside, so I went to the window to take a look outside. The garden was covered with snow. There were very few plants at the back of the house. The tall pine tree was standing on the ground, and just beside it there stood a well. The well was made of stone bricks. I don't know why, but I felt like checking it out. There was something about it that attracted my attention. 
I came down the wooden stairs. One has to go through the kitchen to get through the back door. My mom and grandma were cooking together when I entered the kitchen. I asked my grandma, is that a water well, grandma? She looked at me and said, yes, why? I nodded and said, nothing. I have never seen a well before, hence I asked. They got busy cooking dinner and I came out of the house using the back door. The chilly wind was tossing my hair. I stood there silently looking at the well. The sun was about to set, but it already got dark. There was no other house nearby, only snowy fields and pine trees. As far as my eyes went, I could see snow-covered mountains. I slowly walked to the well. There was a hollow sound coming from it. As I peeked in to check the bottom of the well, I suddenly heard a scream. It was my mom's voice. She ran towards me like I was in some kind of danger and grabbed my hand to pull me away. I said in a complete state of shock, What are you doing, mom? What happened? She was breathing heavily. She said in a panicked voice, Don't you ever come near this well? Do you have any idea how deep this is? What would happen if you fell down? I calmed her down and said, Mom, I'm a college girl, not some stupid kid. I wasn't going to get that close, which would lead me to fall. Relax, Mom. She grabbed my hand and we immediately got inside. I was a bit surprised to see her reaction. She behaved as if I was a little child. After dinner, she got all normal, but this uneasy feeling about this well stayed inside me. The turkey was delicious. I ate so much that I could barely walk. I looked at my grandma and said, This is the best Thanksgiving turkey I ever had, grandma. Her eyes dazzled with joy, hearing praises. My mom poured herself a glass of wine and sat near the fireplace. Though she was behaving normally, I could tell from her eyes that something was disturbing her. She was being aloof amidst conversations, as if her mind some time went somewhere else. I sat close to her and said in a soft voice, Mom, are you okay? She held my hand and tears came down from her eyes. I was surprised. She then said in a sad voice, I have already lost a lot. I can't afford to lose you, Jenny. Promise me you will always take care of yourself. I realized that she was missing my dad. After all, it was Thanksgiving. So I hugged her and said, Yes, Mom. I took her to her room so that she could sleep. She was already tired of the entire journey. I wished my grandparents good night, and we all went to our room to sleep. Around midnight, I heard a knocking sound. The sound was like someone was knocking on the glass. As I opened my eyes, I saw a small girl standing outside the window with a sweet smile. She chuckled at me and called me by moving her small fingers. I heard the same laugh in the afternoon when I was arranging my cupboard. I came down from the stairs. As I opened the back door, I saw that little girl standing under the pine tree. She was waving at me and chuckling in a sweet voice. I said, standing at the door, Hey, you should not be roaming around late nights in the snow. You'll get sick. Are you lost? She then stopped laughing and stared at me for a while, then nodded her head from right to left, gesturing, no. I again said, then why are you out so late? Where do you stay? She again stared at me and looked at the well. I couldn't understand what she was trying to say. I started walking towards her as she stood under the tree. Her clothes were filled with muddy prints and torn out at some places. I was really shocked to see her in this shivering cold wearing nothing but this worn out dress. I was only five hands away from her when she again looked up at the house. Out of curiosity, I followed her eyes and saw my bedroom window. A cold shiver went down my spine. I recalled seeing this girl knocking on my bedroom window. But this is a two-storied house. How the hell a tiny girl like her can climb such heights without any help? I slowly turned towards the pine tree and saw that the girl wasn't there. As I shifted my eyes on the right, I saw that girl standing on the edge of the well. She looked at me with the same blank expression. Her eyes were wide and her pupils were so small, almost like a dot. She then smiled and jumped into the well within a blink, 
I screamed in horror. My mom and grandparents rushed immediately, hearing my scream. I started to sob terribly. They took me inside and gave me a glass of water. After drinking the water, I was finally able to speak. I told them everything I saw. I looked at my mom and said, Mom, we need to save that girl. But her face looked pale. She was more scared than worried after hearing all these. She busted into tears, saying, I shouldn't have brought you here, Jenny. I thought maybe after all these years, she would have finally left, but I was so wrong. I wasn't understanding a single word coming out of her mouth. I said in a panicked voice, What do you mean, Mom? Do you know this girl? Will anyone fucking tell me what's going on here? My grandparents made me calm down and explain to me what really happened. I still get goosebumps when I think about what they told me. My mom was 16 years old when she got pregnant with her high school boyfriend. She gave birth to a beautiful little girl in my room. Though the guy broke up with her for not being able to handle such a situation, my mom decided to raise her daughter by herself. On one Thanksgiving night, when the girl was just two years old, came out of the house. It was snowing outside and she got busy catching snowflakes falling from the sky. Out of excitement, she carelessly got near the well and slipped. She died falling in that well. My grandparents couldn't find her body, as the well is too deep to search. Since then, every Thanksgiving night, she comes to visit this house. Since then, my mom never came to this house. This time she thought things might get different, but it didn't. My grandparents sold that house and moved to a new house after that incident, but my mom still doesn't go out at Thanksgiving. It aches my heart too, knowing that I lost my sister even before I could know her. Well, hello. Um, that was three New Year's Eve horror stories animated by IMR Entertainment. Now, while we were watching that, I pulled out five cards and this is what I got, all right? I got here that the person we're dealing with um, in their life they were they knew exactly where they were going all right they weren't as dizzy but at the same time they didn't feel like they had much of a choice in where they you know they knew where they were going but they didn't know they didn't feel like if they had a choice does that make sense now looking back on their life they wish that they had taken more care of themselves they really have um, a lesson they wanted to share was um, to enter into the full energy, right? Not be afraid of the new journey. Something that they wish they had paid more attention to in their life was this. They wish they had invented more, came at things from a new approach, conversations and whatnot, right? Um... Now, a message they wanted to give you would be to not be afraid. Even though you feel hopeless, it's going to be okay. Alright? They're okay, and they know you're going to be okay. Alright. I love you all. Thank you so much for listening to me. My name is Libra Empress. Please don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you for next week's Terror and Tarot with me, Libra Empress. Hi, my friends.